I'm just gonna take one last sip of my coffee. We're on the same page. <laughs> How so? Hold it around here, <laughs> wherever you want, bro. Like obviously, the, that's super close. But I just, I'll just literally chill here. Eh? Okay, sweet. Let's get it. All right. What is up, fam? Welcome back to another episode of the Self Architecture Club podcast. First guest episode of the year in 2023, so I'm super excited. I've been following this guy for a little bit now and super inspired about um, his content that he creates and you know the things that he's doing for his clients and who he's coaching and just his whole you know demeanor and content creation really inspires me. So I wanted to get him on today and I hopefully have a chat and really dive deep into his journey and where he got to and how he got to um, where he is at the moment and obviously where he's going into the future. So it's important to obviously have a vision and where you want to go in the future and I think this guy has that vision uh, for where he wants to be. So with no further ado, um, my guest today is Anton Maxwell-Jones. How you doing brother? I'm a good man, good intro, I like that. <laughs> you like that? I've been thinking, I was like, how do I create a mad intro just to, you know, get ready to go for the podcast, but, um, you know, let the people know who you are, what you do, um, yeah. Awesome, so my name is Anton Maxwell-Jones, I'm currently 22, I'm a health and fitness coach online, um, for mainly is where I work, and um, yeah, I've been probably training for about five to six years now, and I've been really obsessed with self self self-improvement like that has just been the the main thing that i've been striving towards haven't always been this way but uh the recent years has just been how can i become the best that i can be and how can i help others in getting there too and it's such a fulfilling like job to have so yeah it is it's really good 100 percent, bro and like i think the key thing that you said there was um you know i'm just obsessed about you know self-improvement and becoming the best version yourself and i think that's the most important thing that we all have to do in our life is that we only become the best version of ourselves if we continue to challenge ourselves. And, you know, you said it hasn't always been this way. So, like, let us know. Let me know. Like, where did you start? Like, why did you even get into fitness? And, you know, where did that change come? Uh, okay, sweet. So, in terms of the fitness side of things, I guess that all started when I was 17, um, I, well, I was training before that as well. It yeah. was very on and off. But coming from a foreign country, which I, I grew up in a foreign country, Japan, from about zero, about nine months old until I was about 13 years old. So I spent majority of my childhood here. And then coming out here, it, it was already a culture shock. Like everything was different. The people, I didn't really know how to, the humor was different, you know, how people talk to each other. And over there, it's a lot more bowing. So, you know, coming from a place like that and then, Australia is a lot rougher, if, if I can say, is like, you know, Japan, you, you say something about outrageous or, you know, people are very much hidden in their own sort yeah. of self. So, it, you know, as soon as I came over here, it was just the bigger guys, the footy, the schools. Yeah. So I was like, wow, you know, this there's some big lads here and yeah. some of them are intimidating. Yeah. And for me, that was the first thing I experienced here. And obviously through high school, um, I got used to it. It started becoming easy, but then... There were a few dilemmas where I just started feeling like I was the smaller guy. You know, the way people would treat me um, and maybe just getting bullied or teased or something like that. It would be the, the sort of feeling of, okay, I don't feel strong enough to protect myself. I feel weak. And then there were certain like events that happened maybe, you know, over a party, everyone was drunk and then sort of like an altercation happened. And after that experience, when I got knocked in the head, and I was on the ground and I was like, I didn't really remember what happened. I just had been hitting the side of the head without really looking. I didn't see what was coming. Yeah. And then I woke up and I was like, what just happened? So, I, so yeah, so it was like, you know, it was a real eye opener for me that night with that experience with getting hit in the head. Because it was like, wow, this is the reality. Like, you know, from there, maybe I was a little more careful with what I said mm. because I felt as though that, you know, I... I felt like I couldn't protect myself Mm. to that point. I was getting carried away. I was saying jokes because I was like, Oh, this is the Aussie way. And then I got hit in the head and I was like, Oh, it's, it's real. I I don't have the power to protect myself. I need to get stronger. So that was the key moment that switched for me and was like, I need to get into the gym properly. And, you know, at least what, what can I do? Put on a bit more size. So maybe I can look a bit more intimidating. 
and you know, you, you start for all the same reasons every other either every other seventeen year old boy starts in it 100%. as well. It's like you get oh yeah, I get more girls, I get more jacked, look yeah. strong. I think I said this in my recent post as well, but starting from that point and then going into the actual gym and seeing some progress and it's not easy. You have to have a pretty big purpose to be able to stay disciplined, mm-hmm. especially for the gym is like you know, I, I like to say with my clients as well, the stronger the why you have of what you're doing towards mm-hmm. and the really clear, precise reasoning of, you know, why you're wanting to get to the place you want to, the easier it's going to be to stick to it and even continue on the harder day. So that's what kind of that experience had me pushed to the next level of discipline that I'd never felt before. And when I started seeing the results from just the consistent work day in, day out, and then seeing my muscles become bigger, getting the bigger pumps, mm. You know, I felt a lot more confident in myself. And it wasn't just that. It, it sort of, it really taught me the purpose of um, delayed gratification, mm. which is, I think, one of the key points that has got me working so hard now to the point where, like, I almost seclude myself and I'm in my room and I'm, I'm working 24-7 because right now is the time for me to just head down and work. Yeah, so that's sort of the reason why I got started. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And when when you first started, like, what was what was that journey like there? Because obviously there's a lot of people who first started in the gym and they're shy, like, they get gym anxiety and stuff like that. So how did you overcome that sort of thing? And what did, was it even an issue when you first started? And, like, if you did, like, what, would, what sort of advice would you give to people that are first starting the gym? So, yeah, when I started out, I think I started in a very small local gym. Um, maybe a good example would be like a anytime fitness. Yeah, yeah. And I found that a lot more comfortable. There was people maybe in my school as well that were a bit smaller, you know, just getting started out. And it was a great place to be because I didn't feel like I had the pressure of the eyes looking at me as, as well as what I did was I would go at times that wasn't as busy, maybe later at night after peak time. Mm. So around that 7 to 8 p.m. I would go and um, I would watch a lot of Mike Thurston. Yeah, the go. <laughs> which we both love, we yeah. just discussed. And um, I would watch his like form videos. So I'll just be on YouTube all day looking yeah. at how do I improve form because I, I found out form was something that was really important for building muscle mass. And you should have seen my tricep extensions, man. They were like shocking. Yeah. I was just throwing them down. But over time, obviously, I've learned the hard way through YouTube videos. And, you know, those guys really feel like a mentor, although, you know, they're just a video. But it's like, wow, it really feels like they're there teaching you. So. That's how I sort of got into it. And if you are someone that feels that gym anxiety, that's what I would recommend as well. Just start in a smaller scale gym and go at times that aren't as busy until you build the confidence in yourself and you feel like, okay, you know, I've got the basics down pat. Now it's time to try something new. Because after you get after you get used to that, then that's the time to move on to the next level. And then that's maybe joining a bigger commercial gym, mm. using different equipment, getting out your comfort zone. Because otherwise you're not going to grow. Mm. That's a really good key point and you know thanks for sharing that because that's really important someone will obviously gain a lot of value from that but it's like that's the key how do you how do you view confidence like what is confidence to you and because I think it's something that we all we want to be confident but it's like how do you even get to the point of being confident what is the do you have a process of being confident and how does that work for you yeah so this is a this is a good question because I've been chasing this answer for years. I'm interested to listen because I think I don't know if I have a different view on it, but I'm just like, yeah, I'm interested to know like what what your process is for getting confidence. Yeah, it is it is an answer I've been chasing for years, and I think I have an all right understanding of it now. Yeah. Um, a book that I've read recently that's actually really helped, which is ironic because it's called Confidence by yeah. James Smith PT yeah. as well, and it's it's a really cool book, and that sort of like reinstated my my thoughts of what it is to be confident as well. I think, I used to think, let's start with I used to think. Yeah. It used to be, you know, getting the car and, you know, having the, the hot girls mm. um, float over you. It was like, Dan Bilzerian must be confident. Yeah. He's the 100%. man. He's the man. To be. Um, and then you realise, like, you know, obviously I've had times in my life where I've had fun. Yeah. And those things happen and you kind of realise afterwards it's just empty and, you know, although you might be happy and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm the man for a day or two, mm. that feeling fades really quickly and you have to replenish it all the time. You have to more and more and more and it never gets enough and your confidence constantly relies on these external factors and that's out of your control. 
you can't control that. So if something goes extremely wrong that's out of your control, then now you're depressed because your confidence relies on that. So I, I believe now, and you know, I'm still figuring this out as I go yeah. in life, but bringing the confidence, I think, is internal is the first place to start. So every time you say that you don't want to do something because you're feeling lazy, yeah. for example... And doing that anyway and proving to yourself that you have the guts to do it regardless of whether you wanted to do it or not. It could be something as easy as, you know, oh, I really need to go work out today, but I, you know, I really don't want to. I'm really tired. I don't, it's the last thing I want to do today. When that feeling comes and you do it anyway you there's no feeling quite like it. You're like, I just proved to myself that no matter how bad I'm feeling, I stick to my word. And I think that confidence comes, and now I'll finish this off, is confidence comes from sticking to your word, doing what you say you're going to do, and then being the best version, you know, being true to yourself, I think, as well. If you have values, like, I'm, I like to give, I'm a helper, I like to help people improve, and sticking to those values mm. of doing the best you can, of the idea, the person you want to be, I think that's where the confidence comes from. And that's, that's like the forever lasting, that's the good shit. <laughs> now that's a really good explanation bro and i think the key that you said there was like when you say like your words match your actions like that's true alignment and the thing is like that brings you peace when you know whatever you say is what you're going to do as well and we i think we spoke about it off air before it's just like understanding that you know we all want to do these things but it's when the action matches the words and the work that that's true confidence because we can believe in ourselves and i think that's mm. something that people and we all lack at some point because we feel like we can't do something is that self-belief those who really believe in themselves can actually get to the point where they want to be um and then i want to go to the other side of that is like and insecurities like how do you view insecurities i'm sure like we all have our flaws and stuff like that and how do you deal with like limiting beliefs in terms of trying to like grow and be the best version of yourself that's a good question I guess self-limiting beliefs and insecurities. Mm. Those two two big topics. I guess we'll start with insecurities first. I think I think once you realize that, you know, everyone has an insecurity. Mm. Like obviously when you're in your head it feels like you're alone and you're like, I only have these issues. But when you really think about it and what's helped me is like everyone has insecurities. Mm. I mean, the people that look probably the most confident, especially on social media. Yeah. They have, I feel, yeah, I feel like they have a lot more to hide because they have to showcase that everything's so beautiful and great mm. to cover up their underlying things that they don't want people to see. Maybe, maybe, okay, it's yeah. just an estimate. But, you know, for me, there's obviously definitely very insecurities that I have. Mm. And I think everyone has, even no matter how good of a model you yeah. are uh, working for, I don't know, Vogue. Oh. They're going to be like, this freckle right here yeah. is like, I hate it. I want to remove, you know, insecurity. Yeah. Everyone's going to have something. And I guess in knowing that, I feel comfortable that, you know, no matter what it is, some people have it a lot worse than mm. me as well. But they are able to deal with it. And if, if I can't, then who am I, you know? What was the second point again? Um, self-belief. Yeah, self-belief, self-limiting beliefs. I think, yeah, that's the biggest thing that stops people. I think... um. I think I've seen people be and do what they wanted to do. And whether this was in my life, not so much, not so much in my growing up have I seen it, but from social media and being able to see other people say they're going to do something and doing it mm. and really just surrounding myself online, social presence with people like, I don't know, Alex Omozi, Mike Thurston, people that are very motivating and mm. inspiring. And they, they talk about these things that say, you know, if you believe you can do it, you can do it. And another thing as well, a massive thank you will have to go to my mother as well. Mm. I think ever since growing up, she's always... Self-limiting beliefs come from obviously the lack of confidence of knowing that you can do it and yeah. not doing it anyway. Mm. I think in the sense that growing up, she's my mother's always told me, you can do anything you put your mind to. Like, you can be anything. And then... She would even show me proof of like she would put me into a different sport every year of my life from in Japan when I was going from like seven years old all the way to 13. She would put me in a different like baseball, soccer, 
um, tennis, swimming, and then I would do like, you know, softball, tennis. I think I already said tennis. Yeah. But so every year I would start from absolute bottom. Yeah. I don't know how to play this sport. I don't know the rules. I would pick up. And then a year later, I was actually, I was all right. I was good. I was on the team. I was playing, you know, and that was uh, every year I would do that repeat of yeah. that process. So it was like uh, figuring out from the start, okay, I didn't know anything about this topic and now I know really well and I'm actually good at it. And I repeated that process five or six times. Yeah. Like this is just, there's no such thing as you can't do it. It's just a matter of patience and working through it and putting in the time and the work and the hours. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. Yeah, that's such a so the key thing there that I took away was that you've got to continue to put yourself in places where you're not the best. And I think that obviously builds a lot of self-belief is because, you know, if you're the best person within your group or you're always the person that they come to, it's like you're not raising your standards. So you've got to continue to put yourself in places where you feel like you don't belong and then like make it your home by obviously leveling up and coming to the same level as those people in the group. So no, that's a really good um, really a good explanation of what self-belief can sort of look like. And there's one point that you brought up was um, like online and what you see online. So mm-hmm. how big do you think that has an effect on people and the way they operate in everyday life um, in terms of obviously touch on how mentally that can be draining or mentally inspiring for yourself if you don't um, pay attention to where you're spending your attention, I guess you could say. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. I think when I was younger, and everyone could be guilty of this, like their feet is just full of like half naked girls. Instagram uh, yeah. models, few likes. <laughs> yeah, and like that is the stuff that drains you. Yeah, it takes away your attention, and um, yeah, it can't be good for you. So, I guess for yourself as well, you know, you're very much uh, in this space, and you love to. You know, what were the things that you did as well? Obviously, you started unfollowing people that probably weren't. Yeah. Um, it's as simple as that, and I think people feel guilty. Like when, for me, you feel guilty for unfollowing people, especially mm. if you have been close with them before. It's like, no, like you've got to do what's best for you because what's best for you is also what's best for everyone else. And it's like not coming from a bad place, but it's like I've got to do what's best for me. 100%, 100%. Um, and th- at the end of the day, it has to come back to yourself because you're the only one that goes through this life as well. So it's really being aware of what you want and – who are the people that you're watching? Because it's the same, man. Like, you get sucked in, into that trap of just seeing all these girls in your feed, like, beautiful women, and it's like, that can be very enticing, but for what? Like, what value does that provide you, and how does that help you become a better person? It's like, it doesn't. It so doesn't it's, do anything, yeah. Again, it comes back to that self-discipline, and it's like, okay, what are you watching? What? Who are you following? Because this is a direct reflection of how you're living in real life. 100%. And I found, like, ever since, you know, unfollowing the people – and the people that just don't provide any value to you. And that's not saying those people aren't valuable, but it's like in a different way of where you're trying to head. So it's like being really self-disciplined to be like, okay, I've got to really now be focused on where my attention goes. And it's as simple as that. You either do it or you don't. And it's, yeah, that's that's how I found it for me. Yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you just said in terms of the, you have to unfollow for, for you. Mm. You know, you got to do what's best for you because you're going to be the best for everyone else as well. Yeah. And um, it's just really like, just look at your social media and everything because every time you go on there, it's going to affect your mood no matter what you think. Like if you hop on there in the morning and you see someone that just like deceased and you're seeing all these like kids in Africa passing away or who knows, like, you know, the the new earthquake in yeah. India. Or the new Lambo, this guy is like... This yeah, is or the new Lambo the or like just something that's so irrelevant and not in the course of your life right exactly, now. That's Even point. just really negative news. The mm-hmm. first thing in the morning, you don't need that. That's just, that's already going to ruin your day. And guess what? It had nothing to do with you that day. Like, yes, it's happening in the world and it's sad, but it's probably something that you didn't really need to hear, right? Mm-hmm. So... I don't know. I'm I'm very intentional with my social media and who yeah. I follow. I only want to be inspired by when I hop on there and when I look at people's content. I either want inspiration for what I can do for my business or I want to learn something new about a topic that is aligned with my values and interests. Yeah. So I, those are the two key points that I'm I'm very much um, looking at when I'm doing my social media and anything to, anything to do with that. 100%. So with obviously now you started the business, so when 
When did you start, um, obviously, online coaching, face-to-face and stuff like that? So sort of take us through that journey of, you know, what is the vision for your business? What is it? And, yeah, like, where did this all start? And how did you – when did you finally start, you know, this change? Well, I guess um, I started personal training in the gym face-to-face at World Gym Kumra. This was about two years ago. Yeah. And um, it was a good journey. It was, I always knew I wanted to do online. That was always the goal. Um, I wanted to be able to work anywhere in the world. And it seems like every second person and their dog's an online coach (laughs) now. But I truly believe that anything you want to do, you put enough hours, you're going to make it work. So I was like, you know what? I'm really going to give this a proper go. And um, the face-to-face component, I met so many cool people. I learned a lot of lessons. It was it was an amazing journey, but it definitely, you know, I probably didn't put as much time in there as you would to succeed. Mm. So I was putting a lot more time into my online, and that was definitely going the, the distance. So that's why I decided, okay, this is a time where I just, you know, the face-to-face was a good experience. I was in it for the experience, and I've got the experience. It's time to move on. So then just 100% online, it was definitely very scary. I've never experienced anything like it where you're not paid by the hour. You're like, you're you're in charge of your own self. And whatever you don't do is on you. Whatever you do is on you as well. If it goes well, it's your fault. If it goes to shit, it's it's your fault. It's your fault. (laughs) Whatever you do, it's your fault. So, you know, really taking responsibility for myself. And, um, yeah, so that was a really interesting period that was this is only like a year ago Mm. and then from here obviously now moving in the direction of where's actually blueprint headed to i love the performance based side of things now we've been working majority with um i guess you could say younger teens to maybe 25 year olds that are looking to do their first body transformation and you know build a, a habit and implement discipline into their life but we've sort of we're in that stage of sort of pivoting at the moment yeah because we've been able to do that and it's been great and we've been able to help a lot of people get track and you know get a grip on their life but we've really started to look into how can we optimize people that are very time poor and busy Mm. so people that are very ambitious because i became that person that was very ambitious and driven and i'm working 24 7 and i'm just finding it like hard to balance or you know create harmony in other aspects of my life like it could be from you know friendships or it could be from you know performance at work the main thing was like overworking can actually cause you obviously to be run down and then produce worse quality work in double the time it usually takes you to so how can you what can you do in your life to make sure that you can do double the quality of work in half the time you know, and still have time to be able to have other things for the day as well. So that's sort of the approach we're taking it towards. We're going to be working with a bit more corporate side of things. And um, we're currently in a, in a stage where we're creating a performance 90 product or service. So yeah, yeah, that's going to be a real game changer. And we we plan on taking it to every small business to larger businesses, walking in there, um, giving a presentation and then sort of working with the companies and things like that to be able to, to really help their, employees strive for the best as well because they're they're going to be ambitious workers and how can we help them get more you know confidence it's not the answer isn't always more work yeah that's the thing this is more like that's one thing that i've definitely found is like the less you have and the more high quality you can do of the less it's like that's actually what more work is it is it is 100 percent. and you know like i say if you have the performance and the energy and the focus Mm -hmm. You know when you're focused and you get that deep work, you can yep. do so much in two hours. 100%. When you're distracted and you're scrolling on TikTok <laughs> and your brain's all over the place because you got barely any yeah. sleep last like night. Like six hours and you did nothing. And you did nothing. And so how can we close that gap? How can you work less time, do more quality work, and then you know spend the rest of the time enjoying life? And, the things, and confidence comes into it as well. It's a big, big part of confidence. Um, how you present yourself at work and you know whether they give you that Uh, promotion or not is going to depend on whether you look like you can handle it or not Mm. and whether you look like you can handle it or not is your confidence Confidence, yeah 100 percent. if you walk in there going oh yeah i think i can do it i think i might be able and you go in there it's mine yeah i know it's mine because i can do it very two different types of people and you would trust the second person a lot more 100 percent So there's something interesting that you said um before is just like everything now relies on yourself um, so what 
what were the things that you had to change, especially when starting the online and knowing that everything is on you, whether it goes well, whether it goes bad? How do you deal with when it goes well? Obviously, it's a little bit easier, but when things go bad and what sort of changes in yourself did you have to create, whether it's like in terms of product productivity, what were the things that really um, you had to nail down to really make sure that everything moved forward with um, obviously like the blueprint and the online coaching? Move forward in terms of just keep growing yeah in terms of the things like what was it discipline was it um scheduling stuff like what were the sort of habits that you had to develop daily for things to be successful oh yeah 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 there's a few there's definitely a few so going in from like a a work environment where you get paid on the hourly where you walk in and they sort of tell you what to do and you have a system right you have a system of what they want you to do every day well, you have to create that for yourself as well. You ha- you have to systemize your day and make it a routine as much as possible. Like I have very, I use a um, software called Notion mm. and I would recommend anyone else if they're looking for a productivity tool to use Notion. I set up my day. I have tasks that I need to complete every single day from Monday to Friday. Everything that I need to do is in a tick box format. So all I have to do is, you know, wake up, turn my brain on, get a coffee, get on that laptop and I have everything systemized. So I don't have to think about it too much. Mm. And that's where people waste a lot of time. Thinking. Is, yeah, the thinking and what do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? Just really take a few days to write down everything you would need to do in your business. Like my Thursdays are purely for content. It is for yeah. filming and editing. My Mondays is to work on the business, not in the business. So I'll be creating plans for where is this going mm. My Tuesday, Wednesdays are when I'm working in the business, client check-ins, creating programs. So I systemize my week and it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, so that's that's one tip for sure. Yes. So in terms of yourself outside of the business, like what, how do you go about creating performance for yourself? Like obviously you check in with your clients and stuff like that, but for you personally, like what are the things that make you be able to perform at the level that you want to in terms of getting rid of distractions? Like what are the things that you have developed to make sure that you're operating it the way you need to be? Well, I would definitely say right now, obviously exercise is going to be a massive one. Mm. I think that without that, I wouldn't be as productive as I am. And I guess that part, people think that when you train, you get more tired for the rest of the day, mm. but it's far from the truth. It's it's so far from the truth. And that's something I've been seeing a lot. It's just like, you have to create energy every day. And yeah, it's the weirdest misconception is that exercising is going to take away your energy. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's something that I'm definitely focusing on. It's like, how do you create as much energy every day? But yeah, you're right. Morning exercise or just exercise in general is going to have a huge effect on your day. Huge, huge on productivity as well. Yeah. I, will, I will get some deep... I wake up at 5 a.m. Yeah. Um, and I'll usually go for a... Uh, I try to go for a cold shower. Yeah. Lately, I've been sticking to it. It's been good. Yeah. And that completely changes my mood. Um, I just switch on. Like, my brain just turns on. I love the feeling. And then I can really just get cracking into deep work. But then around that midday, sort of maybe 11 o'clock comes around, I get um, quite distracted easily. Mm. That's when my, I guess, my focus and attention starts to dip a little bit Is that bit after lower. you've done that first battle, like deep work and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, very much yeah. so. Just, you know, I might put on some chill jazz, um, get rid of any sort of work distractions that mm. could get in the way, just systemize my day. And then, you know, obviously you're going to have the peaks of concentration and then it's going to come down as well. When it comes down, usually around that midday time, that's when I take a proper break. So this in this break, I will most likely cook food, mm. um, eat a nutritious lunch. So this might be, you know, fresh steak and then some, some vegetables like broccolini, cook mm. it with it, some carb sauce, um, maybe just some rice or something like that. Some very, yeah. some, some very simple, mm. but it just feeds me and it, it, that also gives me energy as well. Just yep. knowing that I'm eating a good diet is mm. always, I always feel more energized after that. And then I'll usually go to the gym. So I'll go to the gym around that sort of midday, 1 to 2 p.m. because no one's there. Equipment's yeah. all free. Yeah. I'm in my zone. I've got my headphones on. She's working well. Yeah. So then I'll go in, I'll smash a session, no matter how I'm feeling. You know, even especially in the days that I don't feel like going, if I can go, then the energy afterwards is that's yeah, hundred percent. The change, the contrast of like yeah. So when I was in bodybuilding prep, um, about 
doing about 90 minutes of steps now a day because I work from home. I have to do 12,000 steps. So that's been a part that's been getting in the way of my afternoon productivity work, but that's only temporary. But yeah, other than that, I'll make sure I wind down at night as well. When I know I need to stop, especially after like 7 p.m., I try not to do any more work, yeah. even though I could. I think that's a key, eh? It's because if you don't turn your... If you don't recharge, like you're just draining your like mental battery into the next day. Mm. That's something that's been a game changer. Is like once you get to that point, cut off all work, like don't work anymore. Now it's time to recharge, just detach from everything, read a book, listen to something, watch something that's very mindless and take everything away from your work. Because I think what happens is if you let all that stuff flood into towards your end of the night, like your sleep suffers. And then if your sleep suffers, the next day suffers. So it's like a very flow on effect of things. So yeah, that's a really good point in terms of like switching off at that certain point. hundred percent. I think, yeah, I've done the, obviously the crunch hours, the crunch times, you know, with just night work as well till 11, 12 AM and then waking up at five again and doing it. But Again, you get more distracted those next days and you feel lethargic, slow, groggy. So yeah, it's it's been a massive priority of, of mine lately to when I when I get to that point I'm like, I probably could work tonight because I'm I'm feeling like it, but I, I probably shouldn't because of simply the productivity. Yeah. Hundred percent. The next day. And yeah, talk about productivity. Like what do you think are the main factors to allow someone to perform mentally and physically at the level that they need to? Like if you had to boil it down to a few things, like what should someone focus on if they really want to mentally and physically perform at the level that they want to? I think um self care is a massive one. Mm. So this what is What is self care to you and like because obviously everyone loves self care, it's a big thing at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. on the other side of that, like self care is also sticking true to your word. So yeah, what does self care really mean to you? I guess in the sense of, you know, uh making sure that you're performing at your best. Uh self care in my terms of thinking is your physical fitness and also your mindset and um self beliefs and how you carry yourself, and how you, what, what you believe about yourself. So self-care in terms of, you know, making sure you're taking care of your appearance. Do you feel like, you know, you're good-looking? or Do you feel like, you know, you're confident? Do you feel like you can go into the day and you can own it? Um, in terms of, obviously, physique, do you like your physique? Do you feel like you're eating the right foods to support yourself I do, or do you feel guilty from t- eating too much takeout yeah you know if you feel it's a, all a flow on effect I, I eat too much takeout um i got a bad body i don't feel good about myself i don't feel confident now you you know your self-care is, yeah. is ruined because you don't feel confident anyway why would i take care of my why would i shave today mm. I already look bad. Yeah, yeah. So it's a flow and effect. I think your self care it starts there first. It starts with a good diet, good exercise routine, taking care of your body, and then other things as well. Um, I think sleep is a massive one, and I would like to separate that from the self care because even if you do have self care, you could be overworking yourself and getting very minimal sleep and thinking you know. There's a lot of people that think oversleeping is bad. <laughs> yeah, but the sleep is where you can become your highest performing self and it's the biggest hack 100 percent. it is the the actual the number one performance enhancing drug is sleep like the because i've been big on it lately trying to find out how to get optimal sleep how does it even affect your day day to day and it's like if anyone wants to be mentally and physically healthy like focus on your sleep and like get it right so yeah sleep is a huge one 100%. 100%. Even with sleep uh, has a carry-on. Like, everything has a carry-on effect. Mm. Sleep, if you don't get enough of it, it increases your stress. So it increases your cortisol levels. Mm. And cortisol is a catabolic. What I mean by that is uh, it speeds up the process of your muscle protein breakdown. Mm. So whatever muscle you're trying to build, if you don't sleep enough... So if you get the short amount of sleep you, you actually have, the less muscle you're going to build, you're going to lose a lot more muscle mass. Mm. And the more amounts of sleep you have, you're actually going to build more. Your body tends to recover a lot better. You're going to, your muscle protein synthesis is going to be a lot higher than your muscle protein breakdown. So there's little things like that is where, you know, that's only talking about muscle as well. When we're talking about like the mindset and the mental side of sleep and how much that affects us, it's a complete reset. We need time to process what happened on a day to day because everything that happens here is a, 
is perceived through our eyes and it's it's information taking into our brain especially if we learn anything new that day new circuits have been activated obviously neurologically and we need time to be able to you know break that information down and and let it do its reading and processing and that's the time in the first you know four hours five hours of your sleep is where that happens and that's how you learn new skills as well when you do something new that day it's in your sleep that your body actually remembers it and starts creating that pathway a bit more stronger so yeah man it's we can go on and on about sleep that's why i wanted to separate it because it is crazy yeah it's its own podcast for sure (laughs) yeah 100 100 percent. yeah so in terms of because i think now especially with so much like digital distraction and stuff like that is how do you how do you take care of your like mental health and stuff like that so when your stress or you've had a big week what are sort of some things that you go to to ensure that you're like mentally in a good place i i listen to my body's cues um 100 so you know who what kind of person are you i'm always in tune i try to always stay in tune with myself how do you do that so what is it, how do you go about that for you i just listen in and i i kind of I can I can sort of kind of tune in with myself if I if I really feel anxious and I'm feeling kind of um, bouncy and you know I have a lot of negative self talk that day. Mm. So you know, really, I'm a very confident person. Usually, I have I'm very optimistic. I have very big dreams and big thoughts, and I'm always acting on them. But uh, there's obviously some days where I'm feeling really low, yeah. and on those days, I like to. I definitely like to tune in and read myself and understand, okay, today is, you know, one of those days and not making it, not really just following into it and just, you know, understanding that it's a bad day, I think is really important. It's not a a bad life. It's a bad day. And sometimes people have this spiral effect where, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm feeling shit today. I feel horrible. Uh, Oh, I'm a horrible person. I'm, I'm, I look you know, horrible as well. Mm. And it just keeps spiraling downwards. Yeah. Whereas you sort of have to take yourself out and you go, okay, what are some things that I can do? I obviously feel like bad today about myself. I'm, I'm not in a good headspace. What are some things I can do right now? And so obviously you're being self-aware of it. And then how, what are the things that I like to enjoy to do mm. that, you know, bring me back some peace. So usually what I would do is I actually stay off my phone as much as possible. Mm. I find that is a source where I start to, you know, even you subconsciously, yeah, subconsciously you start to distract yourself, either that or you will actually compare yourself mm. subconsciously as well yep. to other people. So getting off the phone completely and just being in whatever moment you're in right now, I think is a massive one. And I'm sure maybe you can agree on that as well. You know, just being off the phone is going to be, it's going to bring back that yep. power and that control Definitely. in your life. Yeah, so that's where I start with. And then I'll do other activities. Like I might even go watch a movie on my own, man. If there's a cool movie out, yeah. I'll go do that on my own because I love movies. Yeah, I love any sort of low-key activity that um, I can just relax with and enjoy. I like my get – obviously, it's been prepped, so I haven't been able to do it for a while, but get some nice food and from a cafe. Very simple stuff, going for a walk on a beach. Those are activities that recharge me and really just let me focus and tune in on the moment. Or it might even be as simple as going to hang out with a friend and having a chat. You know, those those are the things that I would do if I'm having a really bad day to bring me back to myself and understand that it's a bad day, it's not a bad life. Speaking of prep, like obviously you're in prep at the moment. What is, obviously it's a big, like, discipline and sacrifice that you have to make you have to get rid of a lot of things like what have you learned the most during this prep and what's something that you know people may not understand about prep that you know because all they see is like shredded like looking mad like it's obviously really good content and stuff like that but on the other side of that what is it really like to go through prep and how do you feel now being towards the end of the stages of prep compared to when you were where you were at the start yeah so it's an interesting one um i guess this rate of weight loss and like a prep weight loss stage where you're losing a lot of weight quite rapidly quickly over a short duration yeah people don't understand the the mental side effects of that like because is it more mental than physical at that point like 100 percent. it is it is a mental game Mm. This is 100% a mental game and not everyone can do it. Mm. A lot of people give up. A yeah. lot of people give up. I mean, you think about how many people have had successful you know, weight loss journeys without a coach. Like 
how many can actually do it, you know? It's a tough thing. And people yeah. always underestimate how much it took for someone to look the way that they do. And um, for my journey so far, this has been the main reason why I wanted to get into this bodybuilding prep. Mm. I, and it's probably going to be sound, sound bad and I'm probably going to get hate <laughs> for this, but I've never really been a crazy about competing or going on stage and winning. That's, mm. I've never been, even now I'm not even crazy about that. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people be like, what do you mean? You got to get up to win. Like that's the purpose. You got to love it. You got to love the sport. Yeah. For me, I, it's, it's about the mindset and the battle that you go through. It's about not many people can do this thing. Okay, so only only people that are capable can go through it. And it's fucking tough. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's really tough. Do I think that I can do this? If I put my mindset to it, and if, am I capable of doing this? Because if I am, and I actually do it, regardless of what happens on the comp day and I stand up on that stage, mm. I would have sacrificed 18 weeks to look a certain way, to drop, you know, an extreme amount of like 10, 12 kilos. And I would have proven to myself that, oh, in fact, I am capable of suffering through that mm. for this result. And if that's possible, what else can I do that's going to be really suffering, mm. but that's also going to be great in the end? So it's like, it's like proving to myself that I really have what it takes to go through this stage. Yeah, that's the main thing, man. 100%. Well, that's... A key point that you brought up is like suffering. Obviously, people that it's a something that's very common between people who really achieve like amazing things. And like, how important do you think suffering and going through hard times in your life is like really integral into you know creating success for yourself? Like, oh yeah, look, it's funny because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening and be like, go into suffering intentionally. Yeah. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think I used to be that person. But you want to think about this. Like, you think about the the richest son um, in the world. Like, the dad's really rich. And then, you know, obviously, he's, he's giving him cars, giving him everything. Like, he doesn't have to work or suffer for anything to get his way. You know, why do those people and just, you know, broad generalization here, but end up becoming like the drop kicks? Um, you know, really unappreciated. Just lost and lost. Like depression. Depression and, like and that, yeah. yeah, the highest depression rates. Uh, so it really makes it clear that the more you have with the, the less hard work you had to work for it, it the, you're not going to feel any sense of achievement. Mm. And I think suffering is so important in the way that if you don't suffer and have the worst times, then you're never going to experience how good the good times are, yeah. if that makes sense. So, you know, I, I'm a firm believer and I tell my clients this all the time is when they go through a really bad week, I say, that's fine. Yeah. You, you went through a worse week and you managed to pull through mm. and this is going to make the weeks that are good even better. If you're 100% consistent all the time mm. and, you you know, you're, you're doing that consistently, it's, it's going to be the new usual. It's going to be the new normal. There's mm. not going to be anything to be overly excited about, right? Yeah. It's like the suffering is so important to to bring you back down so then the highs can even feel higher mm. and the achievements and you feel like you've earned it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, speaking of achievements, like what what are some really big things to you in terms of like accomplishing in your life that will be something that, you know, that you've always dreamt of? So what are some of those things? What are the, some of the visions and goals for you that – will really solidify like your why and your purpose. It's interesting because it's, I'm sure for you as well, and you can relate to this, is it changes all the time. Mm. It changes all the time. If you were to ask me a year ago, I wanted to be like a traveling YouTuber or like a, like a what do you call those, uh, influencer mm. that would just post shirts, like post photos shirtless, yeah. be absolutely jacked, and then promoting brands, making money while I'm traveling. That And then, you know, just doing crazy experiences. That would have been my goal. Mm. Right now, it's very different, very different. Um, I would honestly like to see this business through to the end. I want to grow a team of people working with me. I want to create more businesses in very different fields, um, like product based brick and mortar I want to learn everything about there is to business and I want to become like a solid entrepreneur with multiple businesses 
and I want to be able to help other people get to there as well. If I had to say like who I really look up to right now and what I would love to sort of strive towards would be like Alex Hormozzi, yeah. if you know him. He's crazy. Yeah, I listen to heaps of his shit. He's man's got a mind of a f- different planet. A eh? like he he's he's so crazy. smart in what he does, and yeah, no, nah, he's amazing, bro. I yeah, I really respect him. Um, you know, I, w- I hope I can meet him one day. But like, that's sort of where my where I'm headed towards. I just want to have a happy life. I want to have a few friends that I can really enjoy my time with that have known me from young and they've seen me struggle. And um, just, uh, yeah, someone that I can share that with, obviously a partner. I've had, you know, I've, who knows what's going to happen from here. Yeah. I have had fun. <laughs> but like, you got to have fun. you got to have God fun. Damn. I think if you don't, you pay for it later in life. But yeah. like, you know, it's not like I'm actively looking, but all, all I do is work and I like to spend time with friends and then, you know, sharing an experience with someone that's, um, you know, obviously driven as me would be the the goal where I'm headed towards. What about for yourself? Are you looking for a partner? Um, not at the moment, bro. So I literally just did a podcast on this, which will release obviously before this one. But it's like understanding like where your priorities are. So you obviously have you know four sections: your work, career, um, job business income whatever then you have your social connections like the people you surround yourself with friends family your health and fitness and um your mental and stuff recovery and like that's probably on the lowest thing of of all (laughs) four at the moment i'm not really like the thing is you've got to keep your eye open and just be open to everything like i'm you know not attached to anything but i'm very open to everything and you know i think something like that has to be very natural um, and that's how I view it at, at this point is that if you come across someone, because I think the key is I never used to look at someone in terms of what do we value. And I think you have to spend the time with someone that you have the same values. Otherwise, it's just not going to work because you're going to spend so much time together that if you don't have the same values, it's just not really going to work because you're going to have different visions for your life. So, um, yeah, I'm not really looking at the moment, bro, but it's something that, I think it comes natural and the right person will come at the right time and you'll be like, shit, like she's the one. So no, I'm just focused on what I have to do. And I think that's people very like become very worried about like, am I going to find someone? I'm going to find someone. But the thing is, the more you chase something, the further it gets away. And it's something that I'm sure we've all been through before is like when you chase the girls and you're having that sort of fun, it's like, again, you spoke about it's like empty pleasure and it's now when you want to feel fulfillment and like real connection and love, it's because you have a real connection and love for yourself. So, you know, the harder you work on yourself, the better the person is going to present um, for you when you do get to that point. And, you know, it's just truly being able to be comfortable, you know, being, being alone, not lonely. I think people feel, you know, when they spend time alone, they feel very lonely. But when you get to a point of when you spend time alone without feeling lonely, you become very dangerous and very, um, open to everything because you now understand what you know i guess self-love looks like but it's like being comfortable in your own skin that people can see like it's an energy when you're comfortable in your own energy and your own self it's you know you don't look for love because you've got love right here so yeah 100 percent. i'm not really looking but you know she's out there somewhere i hope she's doing well (laughs) no i was actually i was about to ask you about that next because i was really curious on you know you mentioned a little bit but the difference between alone and loneliness like being alone and loneliness what do you think the two the separation parts are yeah so the separation part is um you're not lonely you want to spend time alone and i think that's a bit of difference is that when people feel lonely they don't want to be alone whereas when you want to be alone it's not because you're lonely it's because you're recharging yourself and connecting back with yourself because at the end of the day you're going to get dragged in so many different places during the week and I'm sure it's the same for you you're like I've got to be here I've got to be here it's like just let me spend time alone with myself and that's a huge difference and it's something that I used to feel lonely too like when I first started I was like like trying to find like what are my friends up to let's do something you know and sometimes it'd just be like you want to link up with your friend to drink to not feel so lonely because mm. you can still be around a lot of people and still feel lonely, you know? 100%. So that's a huge difference. It's it's the difference is you want to be alone because it recharges you and because it recharges you, you can provide energy for everyone else as well and have better like conversations and just connection and you know, just the most simplest things like now 
I'll come back and just like dance on the balcony, like chill out. Like that, those are the sort of things that vibe when you out. feel alone and just vibe out, it's, it really is like a different kind of energy. And it's just, you don't crave connection as much in terms of because it's going to make you feel whole. You connect with yourself because you are whole yourself. So, yeah, I think that's the real difference is you choose to be alone rather than you don't choose to be alone. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, what no, about that for was, you? That's a good point. No, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's a choice. I think being lonely is a choice. I think being alone is a choice as well. You know, it, whatever circumstance you're in, you get to pick which one. Mm. One's got emotion attached to it. One's just a, a simple fact. Being yep. alone is a fact. You're, you're here in this present moment mm. by yourself. And then being lonely is an emotion. Mm. It's it scary, right? Yeah, it's a, it's I, a yeah, fear. I don't know if whenever you felt lonely in your times of your life, like, Heaps. were you scared? Like, were you like, fuck? Man, yeah, I, I struggled with FOMO, like, mm. massively. And, you know, only recently have I been able to overcome this. But just fear of missing out, I'm like... It, but yeah, Saturday night, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, I am home alone. I better alone. do something. I god need damn. to do something. Go out, yeah. see someone." And I, the last thing I wanted to do was go out, but I would go out anyway. Yeah, because I wasn't alone, at least. But you know, coming into it now, I'm like, "That's." I wake up Sunday morning fresh. Not saying that I'm never going to go out again. I probably will because it's, it's, yeah. it can be good in moderation as long as you have got something celebrating for. Mm. You know, why are you going out every weekend yeah. if you're not if you're you, celebrating? What are you man? celebrating, man? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, so. Like it's just such a, a different feeling when I wake up that Sunday and I'm like, what do I want to do today um, that just sort of recharges me? Maybe I'll go to the store and buy like a nice tea because mm. I, I want to like treat myself today. And then I'm in a good mood and I want to start a Monday as productive as I fucking can. Hopefully that's where you can cut out. 100%. Well, man, like I think I'm just ended on this question, but you know, like what makes you happy right now? Um, my, my work makes me happy. My family makes me happy and me being able to do what I love in my own comfort and time and space and, you know, just having, having this life, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy for. Yeah. And this conversation that I can have as well and share this moment, very happy for it. Mad. All right, brother, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, it's first get, guest episode of the year too, and you're the first. So thank you so much. I'm grateful for you to come on and just have a genuine conversation of like, how do we get better as people? Because I think you know when everyone gets better as individuals, it helps the world become better. And you know, again, it always comes back to the self and how we build the mind and body. So um, yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. If you did, please leave a rating, five star rating, so we can get this podcast out to more people. Um, inspire more people, impact more people to obviously become the best versions of their self and continue, you know, being the architects of themselves. So um, until next time, you guys know what to do. Stay fit, stay vibey.